Hello and welcome to the BMC Quick Course Series. My name is Brad Whiting and I'm a product support representative based in Houston, Texas. In this session, I'll show you how to use the Installation Verification Procedure, or IVP, function in MainView for WebSphere Application Server version 3.2. The IVP is a MainView common action routine that simply kicks off a batch job. The job searches the Unix system services mounted file systems for possible WebSphere application server installations on the LPAR. It then inspects the discovered file systems for BMC artifacts residing in the file system and whether those artifacts are properly placed and installed. The new IVP was created to simplify the MVWAS customization process. If the product is not installed properly, you could experience problems that may be difficult to diagnose. We recommend that you run the IVP after customization is complete and before the customized servers are restarted. Running the IVP is easy. To ensure success, we recommend that the IVP run from a user ID that can set itself to super user. You can enter IVP from the command line on any view, or you can go to the Easy Web menu under the MVW Admin context and choose Run IVP for Cursys. Enter the dataset name of the MVWAS 3.2 BBC Live Library. The BB PARM is extracted from the running product address space, or PAS. Do not change the verbose output or debug output options unless instructed to do so by BMC support personnel. Choose End. Change the job card as needed. Be aware that it can take an extended period of time for the job to run, depending on the size of the Unix system services environment. Submit the job. The batch job produces several reports. We can see that one report has more records than the others and it has a different user ID. This is the batch output from the main job. It has some information that would be useful in a BMC debugging situation, but you can ignore it otherwise. The other files contain all of the reports for the discovered cells on the LPAR, as well as one MVWAS target report. For each cell report, the highest return code is reported on the first line. Following the return code is a header that displays the cell long name, cell short name, and cell type. We see the ZOS dataset name for the discovered cell, the file system mount point, and the cell root directory. The servlet report comes next. It shows whether or not the servlet is installed and which virtual host or hosts can use it. Next, we see the BCI report, which verifies that all BMC properties are present to properly start BCI. It checks that the BMC files are in the proper paths of the WebSphere server installation and finally checks that the BMC BCI system properties files are present and correctly configured. Scroll down next to see the JVMTI report. The JVMTI report displays a startup parameter and also checks that its file is in the correct path. The report displayed here shows return code 4. The best way to find any issues the IVP flagged is to search the output for the word warning. In this example, the warning is in the BCI report. IVP found duplicate BMC files in the server live path. This would not keep the server from starting properly, but it is possible that the file that WebSphere uses, the first one found in the path, is not the one intended. In this report, there are multiple warnings for multiple servers in the cell. We see a warning that the BMC BCI property is not found, which means BCI will not start for the server WS611SM. If we continue to search for warnings, we also find an issue with the server installation on server WS612SM. When checking the virtual host for this server, the IVP could not find one that matched for our servlet. This will cause our PMI data views to be empty. In this case, the servlet will need to be reinstalled using a valid virtual host. If the highest return code is 12, search for the word error in the report. In this example, even though the intention appears to be that BCI and perhaps JVMTI are configured to run on the server, the startup of these components is going to fail. 
the error here shows that we are expecting to find a valid file at slash bar slash bmc slash mvw slash v3103, but the stat of the file failed. If left unrepaired, the server will attempt to load the classes in these files and fail. The administrator will see class not found exceptions in the output. Fix these errors before attempting to restart the server. This is the PaaS report. It checks target definitions and reports which PaaS subsystem ID will monitor which servers. It also tries to determine if the user IDs and passwords are encoded. The main view for WAS IDP is an easy to use action that runs a simple batch job and produces reports regarding the state of BMC components within each server of each cell discovered on an LPAR. Thanks for watching.